The River Dragon Has Come is a song off Nevermore's fourth album, Dead Heart and a Dead World. It tackles a topic in which not many Western bands ever even consider touching upon, and that is Chinese history and Chinese natural disasters. It borrows the title and theme from a book published in 1998, which is about the then not yet completed Three Gorges Dam and its potential effects on Chinese geography and its people. This unique theme, combined with fantastic guitar work, great rhythm section playing, and exceptional singing, make The River Dragon Has Come a short and sweet metal epic worth looking deeper into. Today, we take a deep dive into Nevermore's The River Dragon Has Come. Before we get into the deep dive, just a friendly reminder to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. I have lots more coming, stay tuned everyone. What most Westerners are unaware of is the treacherous and extremely dangerous nature of China's river systems. In fact, the top two worst natural disasters by death toll were both Chinese floods, as well as China having five out of the top ten worst floods in human history. The reasons for this are many, but in general it is due to the geography of China, which revolves around the plains intersected by China's two mighty rivers, the Yellow and the Yangtze, as well as all their tributaries. These rivers move incredible amounts of water, with the Yangtze being the longest river in all of Eurasia. These rivers are surrounded by plains, which are some of the most densely populated land in the world. The book The River Dragon Has Come references the 1975 Ban Chao Dam disaster, which was the third deadliest flood in history, and is almost certainly the worst technological disaster in history. This is the book which the song borrows its title from. Thus, when China's mighty rivers flood, the results are catastrophic. This is what the river dragon means. China's two mighty rivers, controlled with various dams, canals, and dikes, can sometimes become unleashed and wreak havoc. The seemingly serene and vital rivers can turn to dragons in short order. This is what the intro to the song is saying. This intro, which is played on a sparkling clean guitar amp channel, reminds me of a peaceful river, sun shining upon the waters of the Yangtze perhaps. A river boat slowly floats by. It really is a beautiful intro played wonderfully by the great Jeff Loomis. Played in the key of E flat minor, it repeats twice and despite the beauty, there's just something a little bit tense in the pattern. It swells in the last few notes as the next section enters with a bang. As the rest of the band joins in, the first thing that I noticed right away is how crystal clean and organic the production is. This album has one of my favorite guitar tones of all time. This album and The Sound of Perseverance by Death, which see my deep dives on those songs, are, in my opinion, the best sounding albums of all time. They are in the sweet spot where digital production was simply enhancing the analog nature of recording before everything became digital. It maintains this organic sound while being crushingly heavy. Great stuff. The band joins in and we get a key change. We go from E flat minor to B flat phrygium. The band plays a very cool and chunky riff, which combined with the contrast from the sparkling clean intro makes it sound like a flood suddenly breaching a dam, like a rush of water sweeping it all away. The key change a fifth down and switching to the Phrygian mode emphasizes this point. The first riff plays out and then we get right into the first verse. And before I get to the lyrics, I just want to highlight something here. The open note chugging here is very interesting and modern sounding. It really sounds like it could have come out today, honestly. And let us remember that the song came out in 2000, so 24 years ago. It is very cool to see some Meshuggah influence in not only just the seven string guitars, but even the arrangement, the chugging of the guitars, the syncopated rhythms, etc, etc. And the guitar swells here sound like waves of water rising. Very cool stuff. The lyrics in the first verse are sung in the dramatic regal voice of Warrell Dane. Today, the warning came in the flood. Architects and fools never cared for poor man's blood. 
The first line of the song references the failure of the Banchow Dam during the landfall of Typhoon Nina in 1975. When the dam failed, a wave of water 5 to 7 meters tall and 10 kilometers wide swept over an area 55 kilometers long and 15 kilometers wide, creating gigantic temporary lakes. This water took many people by complete surprise as warnings sent by the army unit in charge did not get delivered due to confusion, communication failures, and messengers who failed to deliver the warnings due to being caught in the flood themselves. Thus, for many victims of the dam failure, the flood was the warning. Architects and fools never cared for poor man's blood is a trend that, that sadly has been a constant throughout human history. And not only in Chinese history, it is much more of a constant throughout all of human history. As the verse moves on, Jeff Loomis adds a very tasty descending guitar lick played with pinch harmonics. This lick to me almost sounds like a warning siren. A very nice touch by the band. Cursed to repeat the past they are. The river dragon swims upstream. They've built another wall. This references the book The River Dragon Has Come, which warns that the river dragon will come again and is specifically talking about the then not yet constructed Three Gorges Dam and the risk to millions of people if this dam were ever to fail. They are cursed to repeat the past as the mighty river dragon will always swim upstream, despite the walls we build. The song moves on into the pre-chorus, which picks up the pace slightly. It sounds almost panicked, likely due to a switch to B-flat minor where it dwells on the second or supertonic. The supertonic in a minor scale is a very uneasy note, which always wants to resolve to either the minor third or tonic note of the scale. A great use of the supertonic here to create tension and unease in the music. In addition, the band also sometimes uses the flattened second as well at the end of every fourth bar, adding some chromatic movement to the song. Great stuff and really great arrangement here to create natural tension just through note choice in the music. Worrell belts out the lines, The three will fall, save us from the flood, washed away we drown, the three will fall. The two times the line, the three will fall, is sang, an effect is put on the voice of Worrell. It sounds like a voice is coming from a megaphone, and the other two lines are sung in a chorus style with multiple harmonies. A very nice touch here, which echoes the cries of people caught in the flood, and warnings coming from some sort of authority about the dam falling. Which of course, the three will fall, references the three gorges of the three gorges dam. Another subtle small touch by the band, which I always appreciate when they add such details to their music, especially when it relates to the story they're trying to tell us here. The band then goes back into the intro riff briefly before moving into the chorus. The river dragon has come, souls wash away. The earth has spoken and taken them to their graves. The chorus here is absolutely gigantic. Worrell belts out these iconic lines while the band switches from open power chords to the intro riffs. Contrasting the difference between the two, the band plays a chord progression here going from the 6th to the 7th chord of the B minor scale and then the second time around going from the 6th to the 5 chord. Both of these progressions are leading us to the root chord or the one of the scale, but instead of taking us to that solid home base and foundation, we get taken back to the intro Phrygian riffs. Leaving the chorus feeling triumphant yet with a undertone of darkness under it. Excellent stuff. As the chorus ends, we get a cool little mini solo section before the next verse, adding some nice tasty guitar work before we get the next lines of the song, which are sung over top of the warning siren pinch harmonic part like the first verse. Those who can't remember the last, fall away, far away, the distance meets its task. Here, Worrell is remarking on how time distance from an event can lessen the perceived severity of it. Time heals all wounds, but those who ignore their scars are destined to cut themselves in the same way again. The band plays the same pre-chorus as before, and then we move on to the second chorus.
The second chorus adds another four bars to it, adding more lyrics as well. Worrell sings, The river dragon has come, souls wash away. The earth has spoken and taken them to their graves. The river dragon has come at the first light of dawn. The earth has spoken and in the crush they are gone. Here the chorus again references the Banchal floods, which occurred in the early hours of the morning on August 8, 1975. The river dragon comes when the earth speaks, which occurred in the early hours of the morning on August 8, 1975, the first light of dawn. The river dragon comes when the earth speaks, and Typhoon Nina dumped over an entire year's worth of rainfall over the Henan province of China in one day, which caused the dam to fail. How is that for the earth speaking? After the second chorus, we move on to the solo section, which begins with an extremely intense tapping part. Here underneath the solo, the band introduces the flattened fifth degree of the minor scale, a sound which is unmistakably dark and ominous. The first section here to me sounds again like sirens are going off. But the halftime drums and held power chords with the use of the flat 5 and flat 2nd degree gives a sense of awe and darkness. Like someone who is watching the floods happen, completely god smacked by the events unfolding in front of him. Truly some great arrangement here underneath the solo. The tapping solo playing over top of this sounds like a warning siren blaring while this is all happening. The solo then moves on to the second part, which brings back the same rhythmic chugging as the verses, but instead of pedaling the open root note B flat, they use the supertonic, which, similar to the pre chorus, creates natural tension. They then flatten the second supertonic, which then gives the solo a Phrygian feel to it. Great rhythm work here to give that solo movement to work with but also keep the tension and sense of unease intact. I also want to highlight here the use of the riser on the snare during the solo. It sounds like they just reverse the snare sound and use that for the riser. It gives such a heavy and gigantic presence to the snare when it's used. I really love little touches like that. It also sounds like a wave is washing over top of you. Great stuff. But the solo, one of my favorite from Jeff Loomis here. I won't go into detail as Jeff Loomis himself has a video on his channel breaking down how he plays this part here and this video by Chris Zunpa who really breaks down what is going on in the solo section. To make a long story short, Jeff Loomis uses legato, economy picking, and alternate picking, combining it with diminished and chromatic movements to create this absolutely glorious, chaotic solo. Truly some incredible guitar work here, and to me it sounds like the confusion and mass panic that must have been present during the floods. The whole section together sounds almost violent when combined with the rhythm. The third part of the solo section is short but equally as powerful as the previous three. The rhythm underneath gives us some familiarity with the B-flat-5 chord played over six strings, but then gives us something very different with the B-sus-4-flat-6-flat-9 chord played over all seven strings. Very cool stuff. Underneath this, the drums then play a constant double kick while Jeff plays the last little section of the solo, which then leads us back to the pre-chorus before taking us back to the third and final chorus of the song. And I just want to highlight here, I really like when bands add to choruses throughout the song, or change them a little bit. You know, this isn't the same chorus played three times, it changes every time. Excellent stuff. The lyrics in the final chorus go as follows. The river dragon has come, souls wash away. The earth has spoken, and taking them to their graves. In the mass destruction, the bringer shows his form. Technology, the beast, the seventh crown. Bringer here refers to Lucifer, which of course in the original non-idiomatic Latin meaning means light bringer. This point is reinforced with the seventh crown lyrics. This references the apocalypse which is described in Revelations as Satan being a dragon with seven heads and seven crowns. In effect here, the lyrics are positioning man's misguided use of technology as the work of evil. Wow. 
And thus, the song ends. At just over five minutes in length, it packs a mighty punch, complete with many references from Chinese and Western cultural canons, something which is very unique among Western metal bands. They leave us with the message that perhaps we create our own apocalypse through foolhardy attempts to contain the beast, to contain the river dragon for our own purposes, to use him for our own power. But as history has shown us, the river dragon will always come, no matter how many walls you build to stop him. He will always find a way and the river dragon will come. Thanks for watching, guys. I would love to hear your opinions on this song. I really always enjoy reading them, so please feel free to write some essays in the comments. I read them all. You know, I would want to branch out for more bands for this series, so I'll be doing a lot more bands, but don't worry, of course, I'll be back to Megadeth and Death shortly, I promise. And, you know, if you ask nicely, I may even consider something that you guys want to see dissected. Thank you, everyone. Remember to like and sub. Thanks for watching. Cheers.